Welcome back to the All Healers to KSH series. My name's Elbin Ninja 7 and boy do we have a doozy for you guys. As today, all of our alts are gonna join the fray and although their item level is extremely low, we're gonna push them into plus twos and see if they can get the job done. Now before we open our first vault, I wanna quickly recap where we're at. So far, the Monk is still the only one with any IO, but it's getting ever so close to that 2500 milestone, and the gear is coming along nicely. However, when it comes to the alts, all of their gear is lagging behind, and they're all sitting at zero IO right now because before this week, we've been running Mythic Zeros on each of them, but starting this week, we're going to be getting at least a plus two and start grinding that IO along the way. And speaking of vault slots, let's just go ahead and jump into the vault opening. After all the struggles of last week, opening up my Monk Vault and seeing a Myth Track Biss Waste, it, I mean, it couldn't be more poetic. We're absolutely snatching this up. From 607 to 610, we got War with an Epic, finally. Our Shaman of all things got Gale of Shadows, Massive Vault. Our Druid got a Necklace, not that great. The Priest got a One Hand. However, the Priest got a big Two Hand last week, a Ring for the Evoker, and finally a Cloak for the Paladin. Pretty good vaults all around. I'm going to go ahead and say that if you have not seen episode one, go ahead and watch that now. The link will be in the description below. Don't miss out. Start now. But as we get into these keys, the poetry of our vault opening continues as we make up for last week's City of Threads downfall. Now, us timing this dungeon with a new belt, does it kind of prove the tank last week right? No. <laughs> I'm going to say no because it helps me sleep at night, but we absolutely smashed our first dungeon of the week. We're going to sit here at our stacks, pop Chigi. Let's go in revival. There's a very awkward revival. I was just forced out of melee during Chigi and needed people topped. We also have our defensives here. We have literally both of them, so let's go ahead and pop one. Let's light cocoon the tank just for safety. Pop our trinket. I, I literally, I'm gonna have to read this trinket. It, it reads like it gives a shield, but I have no idea. Okay, boom. That was super easy. Maybe it was the belt that was holding us back last week. I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of feeling hot after this. I was feeling a bit confident, so I decided to take it into a Mist of Tirna Scythe, trying to push a high key, and, well, just just watch. If our tank doesn't know to kick Patty Cake, then... And if they're gripping the ad... Oh my god, what are we doing? Uh, looks like our tank is running out of the dungeon to respec into his kick. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. We had this dungeon in the bag. The tank doesn't take his kick into a dungeon where only he can kick a mechanic, uh, but we finish anyways. Oh boy. What killed our t Oh, the patty cake. Get a Shaylun's off. Oh my god, that took forever. It's just, oh, it's just tragedy all around. Unfortunately, this missed key was the start to a pretty long stretch of untimed keys, and we move into Stone Vault. But while we're in Stone Vault, I really want to emphasize the mechanics and how to play around them, because I'm not just looking at my Mistweaver's IO gain right now, I'm also trying to learn and, and master these mechanics for the future, so when I start bringing my alts into these keys, I'm ready for them. We're gonna let the debuff sit on our tank. So the thing about this debuff is um, when you dispel it, it gives your tank a six second uh, damage mitigation. So you wanna dispel it like right before those lines come out so the tank like actually takes zero damage from them. But one untimely mistake at the end of the key costs the run. The other build I should say is think of it like emphasize the word weave like notice like yeah in this downtime while everyone's full i am not casting anything but then like you you weave in casts oh. 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 what the hell oh the totem didn't die okay that's awkward 
easy. We still got four IO for that. Huge, huge gains. Ah, no gear though. Oh, he ran right between them. Oh, that's so, so sad. At that point, if you can't make it to the other side, you have to, okay, we're gonna speed boost this guy. He just ate it like a champ. Actually, you could have, why do I have aggro? Ugh. Around the world, we just 360 no scope the boss there. And for what, I ask you? Oh no! Oh boy. Oh no. Come on, 5%. You guys got this. B res the tank. Something. We have three B reses. Hit, hit me with it. That's awkward. Come on, tank, you got this. 2%. Oh, it's about to fix eight. Dang. Yeah. I kind of left that in like a little montage format of just a bunch of failures in those keys. But we move on to Siege of Boralus, and it was going very well until it wasn't. I'm sure you guys are used to this with this dungeon, but right once we made it to the final boss, I kind of panicked and thought too hard. Also, there's this weird, like, one-shot overlap that I don't think there's a way to help the Evoker survive here. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. But watch as this key just crumbles from our fingertips. I'm just gonna revival this next one. Make it super safe. Oh, dude, like, what is that window? How, how would we have saved him there? You know what I mean? I guess if he double defensive, but... I mean, that is impossible timing. Mythic, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. We panicked there. I'm also, like, getting crowded by this hunter. I'm trying to, like, not boop him into oblivion. Oh, we kind of threw. We absolutely threw. Dude, this boss stresses me out, man, though. A very heartbreaking photo finish, but we move on to redemption. We can't let these broken keys drag us down and keep us down there. The main thing or the main takeaway from this series is you have to get back up on that horse and try those keys again. And it starts with Stone Vault where I recognize that our whole party is all melee and by simply communicating who takes care of the kick, who's the safest person to get the kick on that the council boss, it just makes the boss that much easier. I'm gonna para stop that. We need to communicate who's going to get the ranged kick. Um, I think it definitely should be tank. So, tank, you get range kick. Because we definitely need someone to get it as an all melee group. And the tank is probably the best option here. But as long as it's communicated, you know. This is so awkward. I just popped Chigi, like, literally just for the shield. Very careful about those frontals. The ground mechanics. My Chigi is not as efficient as it can be. It just needs to top people up and help them survive the mechanic. I don't need to kick every time during that Chigi. Like, I'd much rather just dodge mechanics, stay alive. Especially with this much time left. We do have Celestial Conduit here. They can also help us kind of dodge too if we need it. That is in a, a not good shape. <laughs> those swirlies. Okay, dodging both those frontals, they both aimed at me, which is awkward. Okay, now we. I'm not going to use a cooldown here because we can just kind of pocket people. Beta swirly over here. Get a rising sun kick off. All those hots are extended. And now we come into this next guy. With et literally everything up, everything but Fort Brew. So I need to pop Diffuse Magic on pool here. Or maybe we just Chi G. Okay, we, I had to touch a depth of the totem because 
These totems getting off is definitely what's killing us. Yeah, totem needs to die. Do I just revival here? Maybe Celestial Conduit can top people up in time. Okay, yeah, we're good. Yeah, the totem skidding off was what was killing us. Easy peasy. Only 26 IO for that. What do we have time? We had a we had a seven time, I think. And just like that, we got our Stone Vault Redemption. Up next is Necrotic Wake, and it starts off, I'm not gonna lie, a bit shaky. And our tank is getting a little heated, and things can very quickly spiral out of control and lead to someone leaving the group. But I try to respond as carefully, as politely as possible, and just play the key and show that I'm positive and I am hopeful that we are going to time this key. And it works out, and the group kind of comes together and gets the key done. Oh, tank, help me help you. Oh. I was pocket healing him. He's saying hello, dude. I think he doesn't think that I was healing him. Oh no, I just accidentally drank mana tea there. Oops. At least we know we're good on mana. So far, I mean, we are breezing through this damage. I, I will send this tank a message after this dungeon. I don't like how he's angled that at all. But I will send this tank a message and say, like, hey, sorry about that one death. I was really trying to keep you alive, but I can't. I couldn't have done anything else, to be honest. Like, I'll say something like that, just to say, like, look, you're valid, you were a good tank, but... Also, I mean, I just, I could not have done anything else. We're gonna let our tank clearly get aggro here. Also, honestly, just pocket healing the tank. I don't know how safe the tank was from his own stuff, but I'm gonna make sure that I do everything to keep him alive here. He said, very good job. Appreciate it, Tank. Oh, the Evoker was standing there getting his fire breath off. Okay, good Zephyr from the, the Evoker. We definitely should Celestial Conduit here. Just so we can cycle more Rising Sun Kicks while she's down. No. Uh -oh. Stepping back. Very clean. Okay, we're rolling. Easy peasy. Are we good on percent? Yes, we are. Very nice. For you have aided the Clean. And we got some monstrosity cuffs. Haste verse is good, but... Oh, haste verse is actually really good. But now comes the absolute chaos that is my alt keys. Yes, they are just plus twos, but I want you guys to notice that I downloaded a week or that should show all of my item level, all of my gear and stat weights in the top left of the screen under the damage meters thanks to one of your guys comments it was a great suggestion and i hope that you guys are comfortable leaving more suggestions for the series down in the comments below don't feel like it's annoying me i think together we can make this series as good as it can be and thanks to comments like this one i think it does improve the series but guys some of these alts i haven't touched since the beta and i just am not used to how low gear they are and things are going to get weird and I shouldn't have started off with Disc Priest, but I'll go ahead and skip to me explaining my plan with these alts, at least in this week. I just want to see if a plus two is doable on this alt. If not, we're going to have to do plus zeros on all the alts just to get them like literally just one vault slot so we can at least be getting gear each week or uh, getting a chance at gear each week, I should say. Um, and yeah, that's that's the plan. Let's well, Halo. Ooh, we got to reapply atonements. Staying on one of these guys and watching this guy's health bar. Oh god, how do you play the spec? God, my haste is brutally low. Oh, that might kill us, actually. We're gonna rapture so we don't die. Oh no, someone died. I didn't even notice someone dying because I'm so focused on learning my buttons again. This is rough already. <laughs> I look down in chat, it says, this guy died. But, like, I'm not only having to, like, relearn ramps, but, like, learning entire kits again is, like, it's tough. It really is tough. And then going from alt to alt to alt to alt each week, I, like, I'm telling you, it adds up. But, like, we have to anticipate lots of extra bonus damage that we're going to have to heal through in these keys. And me being this low item level is not good for that. 
Luckily, Rapture coming in a little clutch. Oh, see, like, the Warlock. It's, it's like one little instance of them just standing in that can just make us fall behind, especially on Disc Priest. Doing all of these keys with pugs, we already have the pugs working against us and my small brain. But I never would have guessed that Blizzard, of all things, was also trying to keep us from completing this challenge. I was casting that Radiance for like so long. Okay, which one is it? It's the ring. I am so stressed out. What killed us? Oh, did we, did we just like literally rot and I wasn't paying attention to health bars? I don't think that's the case. What killed us there? I said, I can't use abilities. Oh no, did the server just like go down? The stream is fine. So it, <laughs> Blizzard is DDoSing you. They don't want the disc to hit KSH. Well, they have plenty of time to do it. Okay, we can't even log out here. Will the game be playable? Will the group have disbanded? Oh, please don't. Please be here. Uh, okay, we're back. We're back. And they killed the boss. Hell yeah, we have eight minutes. Okay, lock in. This is our chance. There's no, there's actually no way we time this. Random sidebar here, but one of my favorite movies growing up was Sandlot. And one of my favorite scenes was when the catcher called his home run. Such an iconic scene. Well, here is my attempt at doing just that. Okay, I'm going to be real with you guys. Someone is about to get knocked off this platform. I'm, I am so ready with my grip. Oh no, what am I pressing? This is so brutal. Like I wanna sit here and spam damage so we can get some atonement healing, but I, I literally can't sometimes, you know? It's like one of those things where it's like, you wanna play efficiently because you know you need to to top people up, but like, I feel like I don't have that luxury. Okay, now we can hopefully top people up before they die. Oh man, this is so brutal. Six minutes left. I got you, mage. <laughs> I did it. I was watching for it. Necessary damage. Oh, okay, run, run, kill the enemies. That was stupid. I shouldn't have cared about those. I knew that guy was dying, but I didn't want to risk it. But then again, if he caught those orbs, see, it's like so many little things that are stacking on top of each other, making me play horribly. That's okay. We PI, we blast, we time the dungeon. Oh, we just need one guy dead. Oh, somehow we timed that. That was stressful. Blizzard did not want us to time it. Somehow we timed that dungeon on our priest with all the odds stacked against us. And we also breeze through the same key on our shaman. And this clip shows a bit of the utility gap between priests and shaman because I want you to notice the item level in the top left and the difference in how both of these pools looked. One, one utility button I have that I have not used a single time is this guy. Get in there and fight Rocky. Gotta be very careful here. I'll pop a defensive while I have this on me. Ooh, poison cleansing? Does that do anything? Poison cleansing does do something here. Wow, look at that. Put down another totem. No, the evoker. Oh my god, I feel like I just watched that in slow motion. That's rough. To be fair, Grip would have saved that guy. But moving on to the Druid, we easily dispatched a Grimbatol using our Soothe and Curse to Spell to trivialize the harder pools. You can press Nature Swiftness before Convoke, and it'll buff any um, regrowths that cast during that Convoke as if you had Nature Swiftness buff them. So that's really cool. But it's also cool, it lets you also, like it doesn't consume that Nature Swiftness. So after you, Nature Swiftness, Convoke, get all those buffed regrowths, you can then cast a regrowth after, like hard cast a regrowth, and it will also receive the benefits of Nature Swiftness, so very cool. We are gonna commit our defensive for this, because that, I don't know, it's just gonna set us up nicely for the second one too, because we still have our defensive rolling, and everyone is just so topped. 
We are so low on item level that I do kind of have to be aggressive with my defensives. And my spot healing there. Ooh. Uh-oh. This might kill us. We're going to bear stance. Okay, we, we ended up killing the guy right before. I was watching his health bar, hoping that he would die before that cast, like, finished. And he did, but it was very close. I'm gonna I'm gonna immunity this when they when they all get here. So I can just stand still, they can burn him down really quickly. I also apparently your immunity makes you immune to the mind link and the suck in from that from that, which is very nice. That timing kinda worked out very well. We did it. Um but we have to do this to get these early vault slots and then our gear will grow exponentially, like um for a while at least. Which is nice. What do we get? We got a piece of gear, right? Oh, hell yeah. Okay, we did this on like so many alts. Ah, the thing is it's on this character that we got the changeling. But that's, dude, that's crazy. We just got a changeling. Are y'all ready for these messages we're about to get? You know someone's typing to me right now. Oh yes, we got a changeling. That's one. One changeling down. Terrified. Easiest dungeon of my life. It is a plus two, so that's not even a flex. <laughs> so we got all of our vault slots done, and then we finally close out the week with one more Mistweaver key. Now this key wasn't just any normal key. We played with a very weird build. I imported one of the PvP YouTubers builds from their PvP video to see if we could make it work in a dungeon, and oh my goodness, you would be shocked. If you haven't seen this video yet, it will also be down in the description, so make sure and check it out, but that key deserves its own video. But guys, that's gonna do it for this video. It was honestly a very productive week of key pushing. I hope that we can keep this ball rolling and just gain a bunch of IO over the next few weeks and get this challenge done with soon. But before we leave, I wanna show you the progress that we made this week on item level and IO. So as you can see, all of our characters did get at least some IO from these plus twos. It's not a lot, it's not gonna break the bank and it's not permanent. Uh, we're gonna end up, you know, coming through and doing those as like plus nines and plus tens and elevens even. So it's nothing like super cool, but it's it's good to at least see a number there. Also, a couple of our alts did see some pretty nice jumps in some item level, and our Mistweaver Monk is also seeing some good boosts. It is definitely ready for Mythic Raid starting this week. So all in all, very good progress this week. I'm excited to get into this series, and I'm so happy that you guys are enjoying it. Make sure and hit the like button on your way out. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a single video. Hit that bell notification. I know it's cringe when YouTubers say that, but in this case, it's so you don't miss in the next episode in this series. Also, comment down below which all you're most excited to see me just, you know, go through torture with of pugging to 2500. Guys, that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate all of your support. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.